More on some of the underlying reasons for mic fright today on this episode of Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Voice Over Voice. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. Welcome to the episode on Twitter, Tweeter Stewart, T-W-E-T-E-R-S-T-E-W-A-R-T. It's funny, isn't it, how you say your name? You probably say it dozens and dozens of times a month, particularly if you're in business, particularly if you've got a, an exciting, exotic name with full of cultural heritage and so on. Mine, frankly, is a little bit boring, isn't it? But you get into a kind of pattern, don't you, of, of how you say your name, where you put the stresses, how you explain uh, where the, the unusual spelling, perhaps, or, or where the vowels are, or what it sounds like. No, 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 it rhymes with so-and-so, or as in this famous person's name, which is very similar. Or, or whatever it happens to be. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, Peter Stewart, Tweeter Stewart on Twitter, T W W E T E R S T E W A R T. I've got a couple of rhymes there and a couple of bits that, that uh, d- double up as well. So it's quite a, quite a fun name to spell out. Anyway, I've dug myself a bit of a hole there, haven't I? I've pulled myself out by my bootstraps and get on with today's episode. Let's crack on then. What are the underlying reasons for Mike Fright? Just why are some broadcasters, performers, exhilarated and energised in front of the mic, while others feel a crushing sense of fear and dread? Sometimes see studio work as something that must be endured rather than enjoyed. Well, perhaps these can be summed up by a couple of these today. A lack of experience. You simply need more on-air miles especially if you're working with new people, especially difficult or famous people. And I've worked with a few of those, and uh, some people are terribly avuncular on the TV. You've grown up with on the radio, and then you meet them in real life and you work with them and you think, hmm, you're not terribly nice. <laughs> or maybe they are nice, but maybe you're just a bit daunted. <gasps> I'm I'm producing for this really, really famous voiceover artist. He's a, he's a famous actor. He's, a, he's on the TV and does films and Netflix and everything. So uh, maybe that can make you a little bit nervous as well. And there's also a lack of preparation. There hasn't been much time to prepare, practice and rehearse, perhaps. Maybe the live or recording is high profile or important, perhaps technically or creatively challenging, maybe a big audience or a major brand. And what about that prep? Perhaps you've set rigid and unrealistically high standards for yourself, which you or or anyone else would rarely be able to achieve. Even though you can't rehearse for every specific sports match or news story or studio conversation, you can get prepared for them. I mean, watching previous matches, preparing notes on all the players will help, as will really listening to similar news commentaries and noting what's described and how and swatting up on your ad-libbing skills. Ad-libbing skills? Yeah, pop back. Episode 593 for more on that. And for more on this topic with another couple of bullet points tomorrow on the underlying reasons for Mike Fright, listen to tomorrow's episode of Get A Better Broadcast Podcast and Voice Over Voice, which is episode 900. From London, I'm Peter Stewart.